and it is very important for us to know our history also in terms of how the financial uh, discipline was maintained in our country at least for the last 20 years so that we can differentiate good, good from the bad and also know from the past mistakes so that we don't repeat it in the future also sir but what i'm surprised right now is that the white paper talks about the corruption before 2014 and if there was corruption happening in the country from 2004 to 14 the most highest corruption happened in the state of andhra pradesh which was not mentioned in the white paper sir which is very surprising in fact those were the days 2004 to 14 was the days of raja of corruption in the state of andhra pradesh sir that was the time when the yuvraj of the of corruption came into politics also the yuvraj of corruption who claims that he is a first class student in college his, I, I want to mention his assets, the value of his assets, sir. In 2004, when his father was holding the most important position in the state of Andhra Pradesh, his assets were worth 1.7 crores in 2004. And from 2004 to 2011, his increase in assets, sir, is stupendous, three to whooping 356 crores. In seven years, from 1.7 crores to 356 crores, you know the amount of increase, sir? 20,800% increase. No matter in the world, sir, no Warren Buffett in the country, no one like Rakesh Junjunwala can predict this kind of increase in any business that is happening in the country or the world, sir. Now, in such short time, in seven years when you can have this kind of growth, everyone is curious. Now, of course, I am sure that members in this house are also very curious Then, how can a person be uh, growing his wealth at such a stupendous rate? Now, even the ED, the IT, the CBI, they were also curious. That is why they have attached the 43,000 crores worth of assets of this very own person, sir. So these uh, almost 32 cases under CBI ED have been registered against him. So it is very important when the country, when the central government talks about the picture of the country, it needs to talk about some of the pictures that are happening in the states also. And I think 43,000 crores, huge number, sir. A lot of people, at least in the house or in the country, they won't even... No, if you tell them to write 43,000 crores, they wouldn't even know how many zeros are there. It's such a big number. Such big number of uh, 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 cases happened, corruption happened in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Now, so many cases have been filed. This was the situation in Andhra Pradesh from 2004 to 2014. Then that is why the people of Andhra Pradesh voted against corruption and brought in Chandrababu Naidu as the Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh. And in the country also, they brought in Narendra Modi ji as the Prime Minister of the country, so that they can deal with this kind of corruption that is happening in the country and the state also, sir. And from 2014 to 19, not a single case of corruption happened in the state of Andhra Pradesh. There might have been differences between the state and the centre. They were purely in terms of how to progress the country and the state, sir. Naidu ji was more interested in development of the state. Modi ji was interested in the development of the country. They might have had differences, but it was always the differences were based on development, but not anywhere regarding corruption or anything, sir. And then in 2019, this first class student of uh, college, who he claims to be, but now we know that he is not a first class student of college, but first class student of corruption. He has come back to power by fooling the people of Andhra Pradesh, by giving them false assurances, and he comes back to power. And now the same culture which was happening from 2004 to 14 is prevailing again in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Sir. Now what happens? He is at the helm of affairs. At one time when his father was at the helm of affairs, 43,000 crores of assets were attached by the ED. Now imagine when he is only the, uh, at the helm of affairs. Sir, I'll finish in two minutes, sir. Very small one only I prepared. So he has, he has legalized, he has centralized, he has organized the mafia, the crime in the state, and he is now trying to earn money out of it. Liquor mafia has started in the state of Andhra Pradesh, where if you see, sir, now today with the inclusion of digital payments, you can buy a tea also by paying through Google Pay, sir. But in Andhra Pradesh, the state government is selling liquor, but you can't buy uh, using uh, Google Pay, you can't buy using UPI, you can't buy using a card, you can't get a bill also. So imagine how much illegal wealth is being generated by the government itself by selling liquor today, sir. And uh, then we have sand, sand in the state. Entire sand is given to one company, sir, with dubious tenders. Nobody knows how it ended up being in the hands of one company. Yes, but that is the sta uh, situation in the state of Andhra Pradesh today. And there is the J tax which has been specially brought in for illegal mining, for land grabbing, for drugs. 
and uh, different kinds of activities Mr. for Naito, approvals in government. Sir, I'm finishing in one minute. Already five so minutes I, I'm finishing. I'm finishing, sir. Sir, the point that Don't I want to make here, the point through. that I want to make here, sir, if the central <laughs> government is releasing white papers and just letting us know what happened and what has not happened right now, but I would say they should have zero tolerance about people who involve in these corrupt practices also. At one point of time, they were talking about bringing in fast pro, fast courts judicial uh, uh, laws and all so that people who are so corrupt shouldn't be in politics. A1 is sitting as chief minister in Andhra Pradesh. A2 is sitting in Rajya Sabha who is this uh, in, in, involved in all these cases. Now, if these kind of people are running the state and the country, how can we progress? We need to release white papers every year okay, also. So you. that is why I request the central government to uh, get these uh, um, new fast track courts, sir. One okay. minute, I'll finish. Last okay. point that I want to make, sir. Okay. One thing regarding Vishakapatnam steel plant. It was said to be being privatized, sir. I uh, resist against it. I've already uh, mentioned it before also, sir. Nagarnur steel plant in Chhattisgarh was taken aback from privatization. In the same lines, the steel plant in uh, Vizag, which is under RINL, should be merged with sale, sir. Sale is trying to maximize its uh, production capacity. So why don't you include, include Vizag steel plant with sale? Take there it. is a good opportunity okay. to do that. It's, it's the jewel of crown, uh, okay. Uh, okay. sir. Uh, this now Vizag steel Sir, last point, last Take point, sir. Last point, I'm concluding. I'm just concluding, sir. I would like to thank the central government for announcing Bharat Ratna for three most important people of the country, Narsimha Raoji, who also hails from you our uh, 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 Telangana state, and also Chaudhary Charan Singh ji, and uh, M. Swaminathan ji. It's a very uh, good act, uh, uh, gesture from the central government, sir. But I, from our state, uh, from our behalf, uh, from Telugu people, sir, I would like to uh, request Yoga Purushudu Vishwa Vikyata Natasarva Bhaumudu Swargiya Nandamuri Tarak Ramaragaru who is dearly called as Annagaru by all the people, Telugu people, not just in the, in, in the country, sir, outside uh, also, sir, that he also be granted Bharat Ratna, sir, he deserves it. He has been an excellent uh, actor who uh, who's been treated as God even till today by the people of Andhra Pradesh. Thank and you. Uh, he has been working for the backward classes Take and he has brought in numerous, numerous reforms okay. uh, for the poor, sir. So I definitely put that request in front now, of the central government to grant him Bharat Ratna. Thank you.